just a few days ago, Huawei has released their mid-range smartphone, the Huawei's Y7A. And in this video, we are going to dig into the device to find out how good it is. So let's find out what Huawei's y 7 As far as the design of the device is concerned, it is one of the finest and prettiest design that you are going to see on a smartphone, especially this blush gold color is out of the world. It has this subtle pink gradient at the back and it shifts its color depending on the angle of the light. And that thing I personally found really attractive. However, because the phone has this shiny back that comes at the cost of fingerprint smudges to be imprinted on the back and to get rid of that you need to use the jelly case that's provided along with the phone. The body of the phone even though is made up of plastic material yet it feels premium and solid. Even though the smartphone is not that thin but still it is one of the finest designs that you can see in the market. And the weight of the phone is also 206 gram which is a reasonable weight. Let me know what do you think in the comment section. At the rear of the phone, you are going to find a vertically stacked 48 megapixel AI quad camera setup along with an LED flash and Huawei's branding for sure. At the front, you are going to find rather a dot notch display in the middle of the phone and right at the top of that, you are going to find the speaker grill for the calling purposes and the sensors. The right side of the phone houses volume keys along with the power and lock button which also acts as a fingerprint scanner which is pretty quick in my experience. The power button of the smartphone is indented toward the screen to provide a better user experience. And as far as the feel of the button is concerned, I have found them to be tactile and sturdy. And the right side of the phone is housing a SIM tray that carries a dedicated micro SD card slot along with a dual SIM slot. And at the top of the smartphone, you are going to find a noise cancelling microphone. And as far as the bottom of the Y7A is concerned, you are going to find the single speaker grill along with USB Type-C connecting port, the primary microphone along with the 3.5mm headphone jack. And that was pretty much it about the form factor and as far as the build of the phone is concerned, it is made up of plastic material, you are not going to find the aluminium build here. But still, this phone is providing a decent build here. Well, speaking about the display, the Y7A is providing 6.67 inches full HD plus IPS panel with a resolution of 2400 into 1080 pixels, which is quite decent considering the price range. And for the multimedia people out there, it has a great display. The colors on the screen are vibrant and punchy. And apart from that, it has a wide screen, so it is going to be fun watching content on this smartphone. Not just that, but you can also tweak the settings by adjusting the screen's color and temperature as per your liking. And there's also an option to switch between the resolution of 720 and 1080 but I prefer to let it be in the smart mode so the smartphone itself could decide when to use the 720 and when to use the 1080 and it surely saves the battery a lot. And apart from that I don't find any problem in the viewing angle of the smartphone as well. Definitely it is an IPS panel not an AMOLED so you are going to bear with that. And as far as the audio quality is concerned. It is definitely not bad, it is loud and clear, but there is a noticeable distortion when the volume is set to max. That is an okish problem and hopefully it could be fixed through a software update. Speaking of the camera setup, you are going to find a quad camera setup on this smartphone and among them 48 megapixel is the primary sensor with an 8 megapixel 128 degrees ultra wide sensor and third sensor on the phone is a 2 megapixel depth sensor and last but not the least is a 2 megapixel macro sensor and this phone comes with a 6x zoom and believe me it's not that bad and meanwhile for the people who prefer to take selfies it comes with an 8 megapixel front facing camera. And the camera of the phone is providing aperture mode, the night mode, the portrait, the pro mode, the slow motion, the panorama, the light painting and high resolution and these are just to name a few. And the AI lens feature in the camera is working pretty great and it can recognize the object and get you the search results for that. And now it's time for the image quality and they are good. And the images that are taken with the smartphone comes with the right amount of sharpness. However, the color reproduction of the phone needs a little touch because I found them to be a bit more saturated. Even with the AI turned off, you are going to find oversaturated color on the pictures. And I didn't find major difference between the pictures. And if you are going to buy this device, I would recommend you to turn off the AI feature to save your images from being oversaturated. And as far as the quality of the pictures that are taken with the ultra wide lens is concerned, that did a pretty good job out there. And especially you are not going to find any distortion there and as far as the portrait mode of the phone is concerned you can capture some decent shots that separates the subject from its background perfectly. I found the camera performance to suffer during the low light situations. The photo do came out 
bit noisy. And that's even worse when you're using the ultra wide lens. Under such situation, the night mode is really helpful, but there's no guarantee that it'll work in every situation out there. As far as the quality of the pictures taken with the selfie shooter is concerned, you can capture some decent selfies with it, but the oversaturated colors problem needs to be fixed through a software update. Now speaking about the videos, you can capture 1080p at 60 frames per second from the rear camera and 1080p at 30 frames per second from the front camera of the Y7A. Just in case you are interested to know, there's no EIS in this smartphone or generally said electronically image stabilization system in this smartphone. So you'll have to keep your hands really steady to get the stabilized footage. Speaking about the software and user interface, the Huawei's Y7A is running EMUI 10.1 based on Android 10.0 on this smartphone and Huawei has really improved the EMUI over the past few years. Now EMUI is offering acceleration and deceleration animation model based around momentum and friction. In other words, moving and scrolling things on this smartphone feels more natural now. But on the bright side, the navigation on this smartphone is really easy and I am personally using the gesture controls but you can get to use the virtual buttons if you'd like to. And the features like multi-window really improves the overall multitasking capability of this smartphone. And features like taking screenshot by knocking on the screen is really a cherry on the top. Knocking once will take the screenshot. There's also a multi-screen collaboration mode which offers tighter integration between Huawei's supported smartphone and Huawei's MateBook laptops. And you can swipe up from bottom of the left or the right corner of the smartphone to enable the single hand mode. Just to be clear once again, when I'm reviewing a Huawei device, Huawei doesn't use the Google Mobile services anymore. They are using the Huawei's app gallery in their smartphone which has millions of apps available out there and more are being added with the passage of time. And the Google mobile services are replaced by the Huawei's mobile services. Even though this change is going to take a while, but I think eventually people will get used to it. And there is also a petal search widget which allows us to download any app or game directly from browser or even from app gallery as well. It also provides suggestions for the trending apps out there. So if you do not have a problem with the Google mobile services being not available on a smartphone, then this phone is good to go for and I do not have any complaint in terms of the software or the user interface apart from that. And I've also created a dedicated video on pedal search plugin so you can click on the card icon to watch that as well. Well now speaking about the performance and the benchmarks, the Y7A is powered by high silicon current 7108 which is coupled with a 4 GB of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage and that is with the Mali's G51 MP4 GPU. Performance wise, launching and loading app is pretty quick and it could be even more optimized by disabling the advanced visual effects in the settings. And the navigation on the smartphone are pretty smooth and the multitasking is like a breeze. As far as the gaming experience on this smartphone is concerned, I've tried to play Call of Duty and I've played a few rounds and I didn't find any lag on medium setting at high frame rates which is the max settings this phone allows us to play Call of Duty on and as far as the gaming experience is concerned I didn't get any lag and the device didn't get heat up either. And speaking about the benchmark scores, they are on your screen right now. This phone is providing a snappy user experience in terms of speed and performance. Speaking about the battery life, the Huawei's Y7A comes with a 5000mAh battery that is to be charged with the 22.5W Huawei Supercharge technology and this phone really provides great battery life and it can survive a whole day without being charged once again. And it can last a full day even under heavy usage and as far as the charging speed is concerned, it took me 1 hour and almost 40 minutes to fill the battery up to 100% and almost 45 minutes to up to 50%. In PC Mark's battery test, the device got a score around 22 hours and 35 minutes, while in the standard video loop test, it survived for 24 hours and almost 15 minutes. And if you ask me whether this device has a great battery life, then I am going to answer you with a big yes. Well, for the price point of $230 or $35,999, the Huawei's Y7A is providing good specs including a full HD Plus display, a decent processor and a 48 megapixel quad camera setup and not to mention the great battery life this phone offers. 
but it is also lacking some features like EIS not being available and also the struggling camera performance during night. Apart from that, this phone is a good to go for device. So that is pretty much it about the Huawei's Y7 Air review. Let me know what do you think about this device in the comment section below and also let me know how I can improve my videos in the future. And do not forget to subscribe to TechWafer as well and see you in the next one. Peace out.